Hey, you are listening to the Grumpy Guy BJJ Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? Got to take care of a few things before we jump into this week's episode. First, our Ramping Isometrics for BJJ program. It is a 12-week program all laid out for you. It's going to help you build strength and cardio in the fastest, safest, and most convenient way possible. This is how James and I have been training for the past year, and we love it. So we put this program together so you can just follow along, and we are certain you will see and feel the benefits that we do. It's only 15 bucks. Just go to grumpyguybjj.com, click the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner, and you'll find it. Next, R3. is This is our K2 D3 supplement. It is a combination, combination of those two vitamins, D3 and K2. These are two vitamins that James and I have been taking for a long time that really help us recover from hard training sessions. And for only 15 bucks with free shipping, you get a whole month's supply. I was going to pull up some studies explaining the benefits of D3 and K2, but I'm not going to insult your intelligence and pretend to be a fucking scientist. I take it. It helps me recover. That's it. So for 15 bucks, check it out. And last, but certainly not least, we have partnered up with Dejitsu.com. They have a ton of awesome BJJ instructionals, and they have hooked us up with a discount code for our listeners. It's Grumpy10. So what you got to do is you go to Dejitsu.com, which is D-I-G-I-T-S-U.com. Find the instructionals you want, throw them in a shopping cart, in the little discount code box. You type in Grumpy10, which is just G-R-U-M-P-Y, and the number 10. One zero. That's it. No spaces. Boom. You get 10% off. You're up and running. They got a nice app you can download on your phone. That way you can take your instructions right to the gym with you. Watch the technique. Drill it. It's a pretty sweet setup. So once again, D-I-G-I-T-S-U dot com. Discount code Grumpy10 G-R-U-M-P-Y one zero. Simple as that. To find all this stuff I just got done talking about, go to our website, GrumpyGuyBJJ.com. Click the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner. There, you'll subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates. You'll find links for the Ramping ISOs program, the R3 Recovery Supplement, and then under the Programs and Products tab, you'll find a link to Dejitsu.com. And let's be honest, if you guys can't figure out how to navigate a website by now, there's nothing I can do to help you. So quit fucking around, check it out, train hard, and let's get into this week's episode. Boom. And we're back. We are back. Thanksgiving episode. Thanksgiving episode. That was our decision. This is as close to Thanksgiving as we're probably going to do an episode. Yeah, it's Wednesday night at like 9 o'clock. Fuck, dude. Yeah, within three hours of Thanksgiving. Yep. So, happy Thanksgiving. Early Thanksgiving. Fuck yeah. What do you got going on tomorrow? Going over Nate's house. Are you? Yep. I got to wake up early, make a pecan pie, make some my Brussels sprouts. Yeah. We're supposed to train tomorrow morning. I know Adam and I are training for sure at what 9. What time? 9 to 9? Okay, I might be in on that. You want to train? Yeah, I want to train tomorrow for sure. Nine, was, train, there's a couple of those fucking maniacs who are training at 6 a.m. 6, that's what I heard. That just sounds so stupid. I automatically was that's like, just no. fucking nonsense. No, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm not getting <laughs> in on that. But Adam's all up for 9, so Nine's me good. and him will be there. I think Trey said he might be there. So. Oh, that's perfect. I like rolling with all you guys. Yeah, so. so 9 a.m. 9 a.m., man. You're committed now. Earn that I turkey. Expect, I expect you to be there. I see no reason why not, unless Morpheus tells me not to. If I wake up tomorrow, Morpheus says I'm 11% and practically dead. <laughs> I mean, what if Morpheus' battery is dead? Well, then, then I won't have to worry about it. All right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't always listen to Morpheus. It's more of an excuse for me to do what I want to do and then justify it just one way or the other. So. I can see that. <laughs> Slippery slope. I don't feel like working hard today. I'm orange. It's good. <laughs> I'm okay. It was an intelligent decision. Exactly. Not the lazy decision. It was the intelligent decision. Right, right, right. Or when you're green and you want to just beat yourself into the ground. It's an intelligent thing to do. Speaking of that, I found this new book I want to read. Okay. God, what's the, what's the name of it? Uh-oh. I can't remember the name of it, but this fucking nut job, this guy wrote, he... He rode his bike, I don't know how many, like hundreds of miles, to the base of Mount Everest, as close as he could ride a bicycle to, got off his bike, hiked to the fucking top, no oxygen. Is that what you call it, just hiking? 
well, what do you climbing. want to call it? Climbing, hiking, uh, fear, whatever. Okay. He moved his body, his carcass from the bottom yeah. to the top. He made it from the top to the bottom. To then the he top. made it back down, climbed back on his bicycle, and rode uh, however many hundred miles it was home. I feel I, there's a, there's this fucking nut job out there that just did this. Huh. I don't know if he just did it, but I just discovered about this guy. Wow. He's got some fucked up name, some Norwegian name. Is it Norwegian? Yeah, some something. fucking Viking I know. motherfucker. Some motherfucker. Jesus. So I got I, I think I, I didn't order the book yet, but I found some, it on Amazon. Some remnant. Yeah, let's get ordered this weekend. Human though. potential. So just when you think you are tough because Morpheus has got you in the orange, but you're working out. Yeah. You know, this motherfucker rode his bike to Mount Everest <laughs> and then walked to the top and this, rode his bike home. In this day and age, anyone out there who really thinks that they're tough, uh, God, dude, they're, you're deluding yourself. Yeah, you know, it was delusion. C- complete delusions of grandeur. Complete delusions. What, what about that fucking guy that was just on Joe Rogan that swam around uh, all of Great Britain? Yeah, I heard about that. I, 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 Great episode. Yeah. I haven't mean, seen the episode, but yeah, that's, that's crazy. He swam. How long is that? T- it, how long did it, it take It him? took him, I think he was in the water for 157 days straight, 12 hours a day, swimming. Okay. I, I see, those are the numbers that pop into my head. I think he swam, and he was doing like six hours, like he would, something like he would swim for six hours, take six hours off, swim for six hours, and he just kept fucking repeating that process hmm. for 157 days straight. Wow. That's gangster. I guess, yeah. That's just, fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, I want to swim see. around this motherfucker. Yeah. Just prove well, I can. His, just his story, prove I can. Well, his story was like he had, he had done some like pretty long swims, some pretty nut job things already. Yeah. And he was, he went out and he, I think he attempted something, whatever. And he had caught, he had some buddies in the Royal Marines. And he called them up and said, hey, I need you to fucking tag along with me. And you know, in a boat so I don't die or something. They got back to shore and he's healing up and and he said to one of his Royal Marine buddies, he wanted to swim across some channel. And his buddy looked at him and was like, well, why are you being such a fucking pussy? Why don't you just swim all the way around Great Britain? And the guy was being serious. He's like, huh, maybe I should fucking swim all the way around Great Britain. So that's what he did. And it was just a, just a buddy of his being like, quit fucking being a vagina. And just go all the way around. Just do it all. Just fucking do it all. Do it all. Instead of we're you know piddling around with these stupid pussy little foot in here yeah, and you're pussy footing around here and there. What the fuck are we doing here? Swim around the whole damn thing. <laughs> Worry about this channel or that channel. Exactly. Swim all the all, channels. Swim all the channels. Yeah, there you go. Fucking pussy. Huh? And then ride your bike to Mount Everest and climb that motherfucker. See, but so uh, hearing about this Mount Everest guy, I'll have his name here eventually. I'm gonna order the book this weekend. This dude has swam around Great Britain. It's kind of like. I think I need to do something retarded like this in my life, like a bucket list Uh-oh. item. I don't know what yet, but I, there's something burning in the back of my brain telling me that I got to do something stupid like this, man. Something ridiculous. Something that fucking very few people in yes. the world. Have something that's put my life in danger. Do. Not very many. Something not many other people have completed, or if any, maybe I'll come up with my own challenge of some sort. <laughs> Like one wheel across America or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I feel like I need to do something. That's, anyway, I don't know. This has just been a new thought this past week. Huh. I've been thinking about, man, I'm a fucking puss. I haven't, I haven't swam around Great Britain. I haven't climbed Mount Everest. These guys are doing it writing books about it. Yeah. These guys aren't special. Well, maybe they are. Well. Maybe I'll find that out when I try to do something and die. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. That's, uh... Dude, yeah, that's... I don't know. I read that shit. And I'm just like, thank God for people like that. Like, fucking... I don't know. Being able to... I mean, first of all, I don't know that I'd be motivated. I'd have to find something I'm motivated to do. And I'd have to be motivated beyond... I don't know, just like proving that I can, I guess. Yeah, but see, you're in a little different life situation than I am. You got a family that depends on you and shit. That's true. Like, I just mean my dog. Yeah. He's getting pretty old. And so I got a couple years left. You know, where I got to be a responsible dog owner and he's probably going to die. I mean, I hate to say it, I'm going to miss my dog, but it's just fact of yeah. life, you know. So that gives me, that's kind of my thought process. Right? I've been thinking about this, man. That's kind of my thought process right now is that, you know, my, I think my dog might live another couple of years. He's doing all right. He's nine years old, so, you know, 10, 11, it's getting up there. That gives me a couple of years to sort this out and really get a plan, figure out what I want to do, maybe start training for it. There's something. 
Because when you know, once my dog dies, like I don't have a whole lot of responsibilities. I can take like <clears throat> I think they have, they offer uh, religious sabbatical from work, so I can take like six months off from work <laughs> and not lose my job. Yeah, I can just call it a really like I'm going on a fucking journey to my mecca or a vision quest. It's a religious sabbatical. You know? I'm a spirit animal. That's right. Whatever we want to call it. I'll yeah. slap the religious term on it. That way I can leave and I can come back and go to work if need be. Yeah. There's yeah. something I gotta figure it out. Okay, I will. So I don't I'll, know. I'll be, I'll be interested. If you have any other ideas, goes. if you have any ideas, <clears throat> I'm open to suggestions. You'll be the second one to know. That's good after me. <laughs> that's good. So, yeah, shoots. I don't know. That's funny, man. I mean, you mentioned it. I don't really have. I can't think. I'm trying to think if there's. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, with mountain biking, like, I didn't. Man, I I did some shit that like was really fucking like edge of what I thought I could do and even maybe a little bit beyond it like jumping a 40 foot gap jump like first time you see that you're like I'll never do that and it's like you fucking do it and it's like it's fucking big man you put your life at risk like serious bodily injury so I don't know I'm part of me I'm like I've you know you've kind of Quench that thirst a little bit. A little bit, bit man. So. I've danced with the devil in the pale moonlight, you know? It's, it, and I, I've proved to myself that I can. Like, it's not a matter of, like, if you told, like, if you challenged me, like, hey, man, we're going to fucking climb Mount Everest. It's like, I don't doubt I can fucking do it, you know? I, I, I would, I'd find a way. I'd do it. But I guess it's because, like, I've proven to myself in some ways that, like, I can where I'm like, I don't feel the need to go, like, like to do it, to find ways to do it. And, yeah, I don't know. I mean, everybody's different with that, uh, as, you know, as far as, like, what that is. But it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't See, know. I've done some stupid short-term shit. Like, I'm saying short-term, like, immediate yeah. things like that. Like, you know, a big jump. And so I know when I'm, if there's something I really want to do and I'm presented with it, like I can sack up and do it for the most part. I've chickened out on shit also, but I want something long and grueling that is just fucking trying to break me mentally and physically. Yeah. You know that you're getting 10, 15, 20, 100 days in and you still got to just grind and push through and shit's just falling apart on you, but you can't fucking puss out. So that's, that's what I want to do. There's, there's something. Yeah. Yeah. Reality presents different ways of, of realization and enjoyment for all of us, I would say. Some people suffering is enjoyment. I mean... I mean I, I've, I've come to see it. I've, came, I've come to that realization that I need a fair amount of suffering in my life. Yeah? When everything's just going easy, man, like... I don't like it. It makes me uneasy. That's good. I told you. That's I, why I, I like you coming around, dude. You I, it makes me... out un- of my pussy bullshit. It makes me uneasy, man. Yeah. But, you know, I... I Everything's just going smooth and shit. I'm like, man, I know just around the corner something's going to go fucking sideways on me. I know it. So if I always just have a little bit of shit going sideways, I feel a little bit better. It's probably probably not healthy. It's probably not healthy, man. No, it is healthy. I mean, it's realistic. I mean, you want to be, you know, yeah, that's that's realistic, man. I'm the same way on, on some level, but it's... The uh, yeah, I think the family thing is definitely part of it. I got kids and wife to think of, and it definitely changes. It's funny, man. That uh, dude, what was it that that uh, William Van Hoppel or the guy, the, the Bill, the guy that the, the uh, social like, leap. Yeah, the social leap guy. I want to read that book. I, was, I bought it. Did you? Yeah, but I'm sitting on the <laughs> shelf. As soon as I get done with Malcolm yeah. Gladwell's book, I'm gonna get into that one. Yeah, that's one. I gotta get that one uh, soon. But he was talking about that study on how testosterone levels uh, drop and, and you know when you get married yeah. and when you have kids and it you know it, it makes sense on some level and yeah totally I it mean, makes perfect sense perfect from, from sense, an evolutionary man. standpoint yeah, like, yeah. you don't want to be out there taking fucking giant risks when you got like responsibilities and you're trying to make sure that your next generation that you've invested time and energy you, you know it makes it so listening to that interview kind of kind of got this ball rolling for me a little bit because I started thinking about this like 
everybody that I've talked to that's had kids, they always tell you like how perspective shifting it is. Yeah. Like it just changes your fucking life. Yeah. And there's no way you can explain to somebody how much you love your kid yeah. unless they've had a kid. Right. From what I've been told. Yeah. And I got thinking about it because I'm not going to have a kid, man. I got a vasectomy back yeah. in like 2009 or whatever the fuck it was. Like, I'm not procreating. It's just, I made that choice. It's not going to happen. But it's, it kind of fucks with me a little bit because that's that's a something that I, a perspective shifting thing in my life that I, I can't experience now. Right. It's gone. Yeah. Like that opportunity is fucking, I'm, because I'm not going and getting reversed. And fuck, I don't have a girlfriend, so. <laughs> There's a few things There's a few, things There's a few steps. There's a few, very huge big steps for this perspective shifting event to happen. Right. So then I was like, okay, let's just knock that out of the way. That's not going down. So what else could I do to shift my perspective? And I don't know what I'm looking for, like what kind of shift I'm hoping to have. Yeah. But so that's when I started thinking about like, huh, uh, well, maybe I need to do something fucked up. Like something yeah. just like. Or just get nothing. I don't know. The Henry Rollins show. I'm probably sure it's doing around somewhere. Yeah, I, I think I, there's been a lot. The, I went and saw Jordan Peterson and Henry uh, Rollins and there's these different interviews and shit. I don't know. I think everything's just kind of compounding a little bit. Good, man. It's got my brain working. Good. So we'll see what comes of it. Yeah, well, I think that's. I think it's good, man. I think it's good. I think fuck the, nothing may ever come of it. I may just fucking puss out. I don't know. Maybe, but setting that intent out there at least allows the opportunity for it to maybe come to fruition. I don't know. It's been like, the start. The, these thoughts started creeping into my mind like two weeks ago. And this week, it was really rattling around hard. <laughs> really rattling around hard, dude. It's like, God damn it, man. What's going on? And I can't make sense of it yet. I yeah. don't really know what the voices in my head are. There's like arguments in my head, and I don't know what the... Yeah. The outcome is, but... Yeah. We'll see. I know, man. Yeah, that's one. I, I gotta say, like, the one... Like, the, you know, you talk about, like, that, that grueling event thing that I would have to say, like, I'm just not sure. Just reading accounts of, like, like, like Navy SEALs, like, buzz training, the shit that, like, those motherfuckers go through. Like, yeah, I don't know. Some of that stuff is insane when you talk, like, you know, what... What are you pretty sure you can make it through? Because you know you want to set yourself up for success. You're gonna right. take on something that you're you're reasonably sure you're gonna take. You're gonna right. do. And there's like a fucking huge list of shit. And it's like, yeah, I think I could do that. Yeah, I think I could do that. Yeah, I think I could do that. And then, dude, every fucking account I've ever read of like <laughs> Navy SEALs and the shit they go through, I'm like, fuck, I don't know, man. Well, dude, I I've, I don't know. That I've is known hard guys. Core. I, I've known a, a couple of guys that, I mean, the, these dudes were, in my eyes, superhuman. <laughs> like, I worked out with them. I remember there was this one, this one, I call him a kid, it was a few years ago. I mean, he was like 19 or 20. I mean, when it came to the physical side of things, this kid was a fucking freak. I mean, not only was he just genetically, like, gifted, yeah. but he there was no quitting him. Like, I've seen this motherfucker do shit that just did not make sense. I'd be just, like, throwing up in the corner, fucking dying. And this dude's, like, chuckling at me. Just, you know, just yeah. insane. And I was in pretty good shape. And, like, I saw this fucker do a lot of shit like this. And he went, and he he went through buds. And he didn't make it. Like, he failed out once. Then he went and tried again. And he didn't make it through. They just, you know, broke him mentally. Yeah. And... Yeah, dude, that's a special type of person. That is, man. That's, that's like, real. And I, there's, I know another guy. There's actually another guy that I came, you know, across in my life that I've been friends with. That again, in my eyes, this dude's a freak, and he didn't make it through. Yeah. You know, they just. Dude, it's a, yeah. That, that's it's that, a. I mean, because not only do you got to be a you know physical just fucking monster, but you got to be a mental, mental, mental it's monster. Unbreakable. Unbra yeah, I mean, you got to be the type of guy. To where, yeah, you can, you know, your your brain, your brain will just tell you to keep going, keep going. You you won't break the brain. And some of those dudes fail out because they literally their their body their gets, body shuts down. Yeah. It's like yeah, they don't want to quit. They're not gonna quit. They're not gonna quit. They're but, like but they, they, pull, to to, they pull them out because they're about to fucking yeah, die. They their bodies are shut down. Yeah, yeah. And it's like man, you can't. And and, they, and that's how they fail. It's like yeah, yeah that's a yeah. So that, anyway. that takes a special type of person to push your body to that point. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just I'm glad those motherfuckers are on our side. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I heard a story about there was a 
I was listening to an interview with his CrossFit coach you know, a couple weeks ago, and he said he had this this kind of younger guy who, who was you know the Navy SEAL type. Like he had already he went through buds or he was going going to go through it, <laughs> and they were about to do a workout. And another one of the team members or gym members said to this dude going in like, "Hey, for you to succeed in this workout, you have to fucking kill yourself." And the coach knew, like, you can't say that to this guy. Right. Because this guy will kill himself. And the the senior member on the team said it to this kid. And the fucker, like, pretty much did kill himself. Like, he just opened up the throttle and did not fucking stop. At the end, they literally had to call an ambulance and <laughs> come take him to the hospital. <laughs> and so, just somebody saying to him, you know, that he respected, be like, hey, yeah. you don't stop unless you're fucking dead. He's like, okay. All right. Done deal. Yeah. All you had to do was tell me that. And then fucking old push, like, exercise himself to death. Literally, like, there's people like that, man. Yeah. (laughs) There are, man. So, yeah. Anyway, just to, like, throw that out there. There's a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, it's not like I'm talking some shit, but I also definitely recognize that there's a level of whatever. I know I don't have that in me. I know know I'm not that mentally tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, But anyway, but yeah, there's, like... Yeah, that's uh, but I wanna, there's a lot of fucking interesting challenges that you can, yeah. I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. I read, you know, just, we both read a lot. So I think that that kind of, you know, naturally you just, you, you put yourself, you're thinking about situations and you're reading about people in situations and you're trying to put yourself and think about like, God, what would that be like? What would I, and, and then you start to realize like, fuck, my life's been pretty not that exciting if you look at it from some of these yeah. people's perspective, man, who've either been thrust into or chosen to uh, take on an adventure that test them in ways that most people, I would say most people have, but they just don't fucking access and they don't, you know, and a lot of people, if they were put in that situation, wouldn't access, but, you know... Everyone listening to this, everyone here today made it here today because the motherfuckers in your past, like, could make it. Dude, I saw this this meme on Instagram, I forget who posted it, but and I'm going to kill it, but they were like, you know, remember that you are descended from people who were alive at the same time as megafauna and all they had was pointy sticks. It's like, you know, the fucking giant bears and all the fucking giant woolly mammoth and all the crazy shit that you giant fucking animals that used to be alive and literally technology was a pointy stick and rocks like we were talking about that right like humans basically evolved to throw rocks at lions you know like get get enough of us together get enough of us together throwing rocks at lions and trusting that like you're gonna throw it and you're not gonna puss out because the strategy that was a key point i thought like in that that bill guy pointed out was like the strategy only works if I know that you're not going to break ranks, like you can't break ranks. And if, if you do, and if, if I can't trust you, then this whole strategy falls to pieces and we all get fucking eaten. But yeah, man, that's what we were fucking born to do on, on some level. So it's, uh, we have it in us, man. Everyone here made it because someone in their past threw fucking rocks at lions and <laughs> made it. And made it. <laughs> and we just forget that, that we're descended from these people. Like, the word, there's no difference. You know, genetically, there's no difference. There's not these giant, it wasn't like, you know, they, they could run faster. Or, you know, there's there was literally no difference. Like, that's the thing, too, I have trouble wrapping my mind around sometimes is when they talk about, like, you know, you run across the, you know, people 10,000 years ago, and, and they were you and me. They were the same motherfuckers. It, it, it just, they didn't have, they couldn't. Communi- it's for all we know, right? They weren't communicating in the same way. Like they couldn't talk, and they didn't have fucking iPhones. But there was their brains were the same. Their everything was basically the same goddamn thing. And these motherfuckers got pointy sticks, surviving giant bears and woolly mammoths. And we're sitting here bitching about what you know, like fucking nonsense. So. The phone not working properly. Right, right, right. Yeah, the Wi-Fi went out. <laughs> living in a world where luckily in some worlds it's good in some ways it's it's good man like like you want to go find that adventure right like in your genes is like 
I gotta fucking fight off a megaphone, a giant bear with a pointy stick. Yeah. Like, without that adventure having been in my fucking, you know, having been fulfilled in some ways, like, I'm, uh, what is, I'm left unfulfilled in some ways. So, it's, uh, yeah, I, I hear you, man. I know, I, you know, I can certainly respect it. For sure. So, like I said, I'll be interested to see where where this goes in the next. It might not go anywhere. Who knows? I don't know, man. I don't know. Just bad. Kelly's listening to this right now, going, "As long as you don't drag my husband along, Rob." Well, that's very possible. <laughs> that's very possible. We're, we're getting with, this is this is the first of many conversations I think we're going to have about. Oh, this. I know, I know. <laughs> so I'm already is, thinking like, this is, damn it, what is Rob going to go do? What? Are you? Yeah. So, anyways. Oh be, yeah, I just said I got to get the. The gears going. Yeah. This conversation got the gears going. It's good, man. I know. It's so easy to get in a rut. And it can be a comfortable rut. And see, yeah, it's... It's... I don't feel... I I guess, you know, part of me might think I'm in a rut. Like, my life's not bad. Like, I have no complaints. You know, I got a roof over my head. Lights are on. Exactly. food, Food in the fridge. Exactly. It's a brave new world. But... And that's... That kind of is a rut. Like, it's... It's like... It's too easy. You know, because it, 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 it's super easy just to coast. Yeah. It's super easy just to yeah. coast. You know, that, and that's, you know, part of the reason why I like jiu-jitsu. Like, I love that. I love getting my fucking ass whooped, dude. Just, you know, what is it, masochistic, masochistic, right? Is that yeah. the right word for that? I Not, think yeah, so. Masochistic. We'll go with it. Sure. As sick as that sounds, like, there is, there's some pleasure in that. Like, all right, man. Like, tonight on the match didn't go quite as I had hoped. I took way more ass whoopings than I than I dished out, and that's how it's been lately. Because I, I don't know, just you know, sometimes you go through those little slumps. I've just been getting fucking pummeled on the mats and just haven't been able to put shit together. But I dig that. But I think I need more of that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes. Yeah, I, I hear you. Sometimes focusing too much on jujitsu though can stagnate the jujitsu. Yep. That's part of the rut because it's like. That was like one of the reasons that I wanted to go to Albuquerque was just kind of just get the fuck out of town. I hadn't been out of Junction in so long and just shake things up a little bit. Because it is, man. We got, it's a, it can be a comfortable little routine to get in. So, and, and if you're not conscious of it, I guess that's what allows it to become a rut. Like if you don't realize like, all right, like this is starting to get a little too comfortable. I need a little, little something to, to, Shit, shit out. Yeah, just, just, just give me that. Yeah, the different perspective. So it's as funny as it sounds. Like I said, that's exactly why I wanted to fucking go to Albuquerque and go through the the body weight workshop thing. Was just, just dude, give my brain just a different perspective on stuff. It definitely helps. Gives you a different way to look at stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. Now you're getting me all thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I can see it in your eyes. I can tell. I can, I can see the workings behind the eyes. Like, all right, what's going on here? Like, how do I make sense of this? Uh, yeah. well, where is this going to lead? Yeah. No, man, it's good. You only get one fucking life, really, yeah. at the end of the day. And, you, and man, fucking time goes by so fast. So fast. It, For when you, man, it fucks you up when you really stop and think about it. Like, damn, like Thanksgiving's tomorrow already. Yeah. Next thing you know, Christmas is going to be over. Yep. And we're on to fucking 2019. Oh, I know, dude. I'm hitting a birthday in between, so I'll be 43 Whew. before the end of the year. 43. So, I know. It's crazy. I was like, what the fuck is that, man? What is that? I don't even know what to do with that number, like, at all. Like, it's a crazy number. So... Just stop, <clears throat> just stop thinking. See, that's what I'm going to try and do. Like, you know, uh, who's that big fucking fighter, that big African dude in the UFC... Check Congo comes to mind, but no, the new guy. I forget the new guy. Oh, was. Zingano? Yeah, yeah. Zingano? Yeah, Ng- Ngannou. Ngannou. Francis Ngannou. Yeah, yeah, Like, they don't, no, no one's really sure how old he is, because it's just like... It's like no, a Cuban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like the Cuban. Like, yeah, we're not sure when you're born. We're not really sure. Right. And that's kind of how it is with him. Like, no one's quite sure. At least. He's right? got to be a, he's in this, uh, like, yeah. they got a five-year window. Like, okay. he's here to here. Yeah. yeah. That's how we should live. I can start claiming, like, 40. Yeah. Saying Just saying, I'm 40-ish. I'm at least 40. I'm, I'm yeah. 40 to 45-ish. Yeah. Just fucking leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. I know. It does. It fucking goes by quick. You're so fast. So, got to grab life by the balls. It's not going to kick its own ass. No, it's not. <laughs> and then it's almost over. It's just slipping through your fingers, man. Ah, it's a crazy thought. Yeah. Yeah. 
You, as you can tell, I've been thinking a lot. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? This is fucking. I've had a lot of fucked up thoughts this past couple of weeks, man. I know, dude. You're like fucking books and fucking. You're interviews. opening my vault here. It's like these are the dark thoughts at night that I'm like, oh shit, dude. Oh no, dude. This was see. This was probably like I'm kind of an overthinker as it is, man. Like I obsess on certain things too much, and I, it's not healthy. <laughs> and then I have a job to where I spend all day by myself fucking cruising around. I mean, I got little interactions with people here and there, but they're, they're short-lived. You know, just blah, blah, blah. Hey, how you doing here? Sign, blah, blah. You know, I'm on my way. And then I'm back in my truck. You know, that's why that's why I listen to podcasts and shit so much because it gets me out of my own head. But there's times, like, to where it's... Like, I'm in and out of my truck a lot, so I'm just listening to music instead of podcasts because I'm not starting and stopping it. And, man, I'll just get in my own head fucking thinking about something. And then once I get... I'm like a dog with a fucking bone. Once something gets in my head, that motherfucker just starts rattling around all goddamn day and I can't fucking shake it. And then it drives me fucking insane sometimes, man. And uh, then it just spirals and it's like, God damn it. I, you, you can't shut it off. No matter what you do, these fucking stupid thoughts are still going on. It's, just, yeah. it's, not, it's not good, man. I know. That's where meditation helps. Yeah, that's, I struggle with that. <laughs> you know, it's funny, man. Yeah, <clears throat> that's interesting. Because I think it would be really helpful for you. I've gone through streaks, man. I, were, I, would, I think the longest streak I ever went was like six months to where I was meditating religiously. Like yeah. Every day. you know, I'd started with five minutes, and when that was pretty gravy, then I'd go 10. And I was up to, I think the most I ever got to a city was like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. I would never do much more than that. And I did. I was pretty good for a while, but once you break that habit... It's tough. It's so hard to it get back into. It is tough to get back into. Yeah. It's so hard. Man, that's, I, I guess like even doing it selectively though, because there'll be times... I mean, I'll admit, like I go through streaks where I'll be more uh, consistent with it than other times. But I use it selectively and there'll be times where it's like, all right, dude, my, I just... I This fucking... I got to cool my brain off. I don't know. That's the only way I can really describe it is it feels like my brain is just redlined and it just needs there just needs to be a fucking you know vent open to just let the steam, let the steam out, out. Just that, that's bit, how i operate dude. most of the fucking time man like that vent's broken i can't quite open it. yes yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. man i can feel it and you can yeah. feel the pressure like almost physically feel the pressure like build and and then it's like all right all right, all right i gotta i gotta slow things down here at the very least and so I've found actually like it's funny, man. At night, sometimes I'll wake up at like two, three o'clock in the morning, and my brain will just be spinning. Oh yeah. And I'm like, fuck. And so that's when I'll do it. I'll go out in the living room and uh, just sit there and just meditate. And it's really just breathing. And I, and and I'm just I'm just. And this is one of the things like with the HRV stuff, like you know, with with. Uh, breathing exercises being able to shift you from that because basically your sympathetic nervous system dominant at that point like your fight or flight reflex is triggered and and you know you think there's a goddamn tiger out at its side and you can't convince yourself that like man it's not a tiger because it seems real and so you have to you know shift that nervous system away from that some other way and so that's where the meditation comes in and the breathing exercises and like trying to hack your your you know autonomic nervous system and and get it to shift and so that's where i use it a lot because like i said man i sit there at three o'clock in the morning it's like i gotta get to fucking bed i can't sit here and let my mind spin until five o'clock i'll be shit tomorrow Dude, that, <clears throat> that's way more intelligent than the approach i do if i <clears throat> If you really knew how many times I woke up at like three or four in the morning because my brain's spinning like that, and I know like, all right, I'm not going back to sleep. So instead of getting up and meditating, I, I get up and go do like push-ups and fucking <laughs> pull-ups and shit. Like, all right, that's my method. Like, I never thought of like meditating. I'm like, no, I just do some fucking push-ups. And I'll do that now. So yeah, I'm still not tired. All right, let's do some fucking pull-ups. All right, some crunches. Oh, some, I'll just go through this whole thing. And then next thing you know, I'm like, Man, fuck, I really don't feel like going back to bed, so I guess I'm up, you know. Here we go. Here we go. I guess the day's <laughs> going. Yeah. I've done that more times than I care to admit. Yeah. Well, I'd at least lay in bed because I felt it was quitter talk to just get up. So, I'm not a quitter, Rob. If I say I'm not getting up till X amount of time, I'm going to fucking lay there. Well, see, so. I always, I'd operate under the principle to, like, <laughs> I thought I could wear myself out. No, I hear you. That was, my, just, thought, that was my thought process. That's just my... 
excuse. So, but no, that's I, that's what I found, and I think that the but <clears throat> man, it's it's. It's an interesting thing, man. Like, you want to, without like getting too metaphysical or religious or whatever, like, if you on some level believe that you are connected in any way to the fucking something more, the, the universe, universe, reality, God, something. Like, there's just, there's something more and we're not just our own random little being in a vacuum like we're actually in some way connected to something more well then like in like you are you have access to that like it it, it can be a two-way thing you know and 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 if you can just and this is just my thought on it. Like, I think this is where a lot of, like, you know, prayer and, and meditation, where these things kind of cross over, is if you can just quiet that fucking monkey mind and you can just shut the fuck up and realize, like, all right, man, all this sh chatter going on is bullshit. I'm connected to something bigger. I'm trying to quiet my mind so I can see. Maybe I can hear something. And it's kind of interesting how, you know, you have a problem, you have something, and, and you, you, you go to whatever it is, the universe, God, whatever it is, with this problem, and then you just shut the fuck up. And you just see what kind of pops up. Man, it's really interesting, the things that pop up, and some of the insights that come from it. And, but you got to shut the you gotta fuck shut, up. Yeah, you got to shut. You got to shut up to hear, see those insights. Yeah, you got to shut the fuck yeah. up to hear it, man. It's like I, I again, like not just you know I, I was I was raised in a religious household, so like I have a lot of connections to this stuff. But like you know that's where like the to me that's where the quote in the Bible like you know you know be still and know that I am the Lord. Like that's what that means. Is like shut the fuck up. Like like I have the answers and you're connected to me. And if you just shut the fuck up, I tell you what they are. But you won't shut up. You won't be still. You won't be quiet. And, and know that like I, I have this infinite power and I'll share it with you. But you just won't do it. So anyways, that's just... I'm I'm not as consistent with all this shit as I'd like to be. But that's it makes kind sense. of what... I mean, it, it definitely makes sense. That's what kind of keeps yeah. me... That That's where like the meditation, like I said, like why I... You know, to me, it's, it's, it is a... a direct useful tool for those two things like releasing the steam valve on my brain when it's overheated and trying to access some sort of greater intelligence that I might be connected to who knows and you know maybe I'm not but if I am it's makes sense to at least try to listen to it so that's the that's kind of how I try to use it but so that's why it's like it's more it's not just meditation it's like man it's this really active tool but you just it's like icing or heat or massage it's you know it's breathing exercises and and trying to you know quiet my mind to see if I can hear something like and so it's a tool but anyways that's just I think you're a lot like I am like once you see the use for a tool like, because I saw, like, when we went to the Steve Maxwell thing and, like, mobility completely changed in your mind. Like, oh, that's what this fucking tool is for. <laughs> right? It wasn't that you knew anything new about no mobility that you didn't know before. You just suddenly were like, ah, oh, that's how you use this thing this way. And so I feel that's kind of the way with meditation. Like, once you kind of wrap your mind and you see it the right way, you're going to be like, oh, well, fucking A, well, that makes sense. Well, yeah, you should be meditating. Like, this is how it goes. And and so, anyways, that's why I kind of harp on you a little bit about it. But, All right, <clears throat> noted. <laughs> yeah, noted. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there there was there was a reason this you know was so closely connected, especially with like the samurai uh, class, the the ability to clear the mind and all of that. I mean, that's the other thing, dude. If you're a fucking combat athlete, you look at that's a 
it has to have some sort of use. Well, yeah. You know, okay, I mean, just anecdotally, just the past, like, two weeks, you know, my brain's been a little fucked up. Just, you know, random different life shit, this and that. And I mean, yeah, like I've explained, I've kind of been in yeah. my own head. And that directly, like, I can't quiet my mind and just get into the zone training. That's why I keep getting my ass whooped. You know, because I, I can't shut off. Yeah. You know, no, I mean, I'll have these little flashes where I can shut shit off. Yeah. But it's, it's fucking very... Very sporadic. Usually, usually I can shut all that outside noise off real easy when I'm training. Like all I'm thinking about is, am I killing this leg? Is his hip killed? But boom, 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 nothing else is going on. Right. Like, or is it like, not lately? It's like, oh, I got his arm killed. Oh, what about this? Oh, fuck. <laughs> his arm's getting away. Getting, <laughs> God damn it. Now I got, okay, he's got my foot stuck. Right, I'm getting my foot out of here. Then I'll start thinking about something. I'm like, motherfucker. And then it just, that's just, boom. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I get mad at myself for that. And so then that fucking compound, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's just too many minds. Too many minds. Yeah. I know. I hate that. It's like you know, everybody fucking loves to hate Tom Cruise, but you know, The Last Samurai wasn't the worst movie on the planet. No, was, I it thought it was a cool movie. Totally historically inaccurate. And I don't give a fuck. It was, cool, it, was it was a cool, cool movie. movie, it was man. Cool movie. But I just I remember that part, man, where they were they were talking about like you know too many minds. You know, you fight with too many minds. You're worried what he's thinking. You're worried what he's thinking. You're worried what he's thinking. You know, you're worried about how you look. Like, it's like, you got too many fucking minds going on here, man. And, like, yeah, I did. I catch myself with that rolling. But that's the thing is, like, what you love about jujitsu is that it's meditative. Like, that's what yeah. meditative is. You know what I mean? Like, you are, you're outside of your mind. Like, you're, you are... Like this is the one. This is the thing that Musashi talked about all the time, and and, and even in the, at, at the end of his book, you know, w emphasizes that there's nothing outside of you. Like you, you, you already have perfect jujitsu inside of you. It's not outside of you. There's nothing that you need to learn. You just need to let fucking perfect jujitsu out of you. But perfect jujitsu isn't you. Perfect jujitsu is the way. Perfect jujitsu is. You know, it, it's the, the universe, like, manifesting itself through you in this art. And if you would just be the vessel and let the universe manifest itself through you, then jujitsu would flow through you. Like, that, that, like, that's the fucking, the message. But that's, again, you have to get out of your own way. And that's that meditative state. Like, when you are out of your own way, you aren't thinking. The ego's gone. All that bullshit little blah, 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 blah is gone. And you're just like, and you're like, it's just the, the fucking universe is manifesting itself through you, through this, you know, beautiful art that we do. Cause you're just like open, you're open, the fucking channel's open and you're letting it come through. And so I think that that's where like meditation came in was like, it was a way to practice that ability to do that more consciously rather than have to rely on the activity to put you put in, in there yeah, yeah. kind of thing. And so that way, when you were doing the activity, it was easier to put yourself there if you weren't. And so, again, this is my theory. And as I talk about it, I wish it, I meditated more consistently. Yeah, but. that's a good way to see that tool for me. You know, it's, yeah, it's a, if you can do, if you can get yourself into that frame of mind without any external factors, Without the jiu-jitsu, without, without your opponent trying to fuck you up. Yeah. If you're good at doing that, just sitting at home, then when you're on the mat and you got your opponent trying to whoop your ass, it's super easy yeah. just to be in that, yep. you know, the right frame of mind. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. No. Because that's what it is, man. And that's the thing I keep trying to go so, I never thought about it like that. No. I never thought about... Yeah, I never <laughs> thought about that, like being... Okay, I mean, I thought about it being the same kind of state of mind, but I never thought of just using regular meditation as like training your mind to get into that state easier for when you're right. Like, yeah, scrapping. yeah, yeah, huh. yeah. It seems it seems so simple. It does know? seem, yeah. I don't know why I never really thought about that. So that's one of the things too, like with the like um, again, there's a lot of different types of meditation, but like. From my understanding and the reading that I had, the like the Zen meditation that the samurai practiced, it wasn't where you were trying to tune everything out. You're actually trying to 
make yourself hyper aware of everything around you. And again, you can't do that when you're thinking about things. So again, it's this kind of this like, I think, um, misconception that a lot of people have about meditation is like, it's this one way. And like, yeah, if I'm like, you know, as a, using it to like make yourself hyper aware of everything that's going around you without interfering thoughts. Oh yeah, I can see the fucking value in that. And again, going back to the, the, the last samurai, like that scene where he was like, you know, he was getting attacked and he could like see what he was going to do right before it happened. Like that was kind of that manifestation of like, all right, like you have, you know, this is what's going to happen and, and you manifest it. And that's what, that, that's what you're looking for, uh, in that, in, in the moment. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, man, it can be a valuable tool. But I think that's the, the, the idea, like figure out that mindset, like how it is a valuable tool. You'll be all over it, but that's how I see it. So, <clears throat> all right. Okay. Lesson learned. Maybe. Yeah, man. But let's figure out your great adventure because I think meditation will help you on that. I think it'll help you figure out what your great adventure is going to be. Like that was kind of how I think like actually how all this got brought around was like, you have this problem and it's stewing in your head and, and the universe will whisper in your ear, brother. It will talk to you and you just have to let it. So there you go. It's a, I think that's a worthy endeavor. I got to meditate so I can figure out what my Rob's great adventure is going to be. Fuck yeah, man. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Every hero needs that. Adventure. Adventure. Yeah, and you know, already, it's not going to be like the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail. You know, as long as, you know, six month hikes, so many people do like, there's too many fucking hippies on that. <laughs> like, ah, yeah, right. There's too much fucking patchouli oil and dealing with hippies. Yeah. I thought about that. I was like, nah, it's not for me. Now, if there was like jujitsu schools along that hike. Right. That I could hike, train, hike, See, train. See, that's what I was wondering. Is there a jujitsu yeah. angle on the adventure? I, I don't know. That's... So... Yeah, I don't know, man. Let's we'll we'll see. So you got, we'll talk more yeah. about it. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. All right. So. So you, we brushed on your little adventure to New Mexico. Yes. This body weight seminar. Yes. Yeah, yeah, man. It was a good time. It was uh, went to the performance ranch there in Albuquerque, which is uh, well known. Albuquerque. It's funny, man. I mean. It, it uh, I guess it goes back because that's where Greg Jackson was from, right? So the Performance Ranch. Well, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. So I'm just trying to say, like, because Albuquerque is has an interesting, high, interestingly high concentration of professional UFC MMA fighters. I, yeah. I mean, would you would you agree? But I, it was just, it was because of Greg Jackson opening his gym. I think right? yeah, that's what I'm saying. Originally, that's why you have so many fucking MMA guys in that area. Right. Was Greg Jackson was from that area, and yeah. at one point, I, and he's still like that's a you know Greg Jackson himself, and you know the gym still has a lot of great fighters. But dude, at one point, like Greg Jackson's gym was fucking pretty much ruling the MMA world. I mean, they had... It was one of the meccas. I mean, you had... Like, the West Coast was obviously big in jiu-jitsu and MMA. A lot of schools, but... You start coming this way, I mean, like, Greg Jackson's was dude, spot. Dude, they had so many champions at one point training yeah. there. And it was just this, like, you know, crazy random school in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And who's this Greg Jackson guy? Cause I, I remember, because I, I really connected with him. He was in the, uh, the fighter's mind. Uh, the, the Sam the Sheridan, Sheridan book, yeah. the follow-up to the Fighter's Heart, where he went and interviewed a bunch of people, and Greg Jackson was one of the guys that he went and interviewed, and it was just it was really interesting, uh, you know, interview like you know outside the box thinker, you know, being successful. But anyway, so you have like a really high concentration of MMA fighters in that area, and so the Performance Ranch is a gym um, in that area that is the strength and conditioning gym for a lot of these fighters. And so, like, Cowboy Cerrone, uh, um, uh, John Jones trains there. I told you I ran into John Dobson when I was there. So they got a lot of um, pro fighters. But, um, so yeah, so that was the gym that it was at. And then the guy that was hosting it and putting it on, uh, his name's Eric Milan. 
and he was the original on it steel mace master coach like he was the guy that was at the who did the certification that i went to a couple of years ago and so he started his own thing called viking ninja which you know when you know it makes a lot of sense as far as like what his you know philosophies are and what he's you know trying to emphasize with stuff but uh um so anyways it was a body weight workshop that he was putting on there so yeah, I just wanted to go check it out, check out a new gym. Dude, the gym is fucking dope. It was pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, yeah. It's not huge or anything, but really nice, very well equipped. Um, and uh, yeah, just a, just a nice nice gym. It was cool. The guy, uh, Lawrence, um, the guy that runs it, uh, owns it, um, he's a mountain biker. And so it, it was cool because he knew who I was, his bike, James. And I told him, yeah, I've got MTV Stream Training Systems. He's just like, oh, I know who you are. Yeah, I bought one of your programs back in 2007 and been following your shit. So it was... Uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, man. To, um, yeah, I don't know. I've been doing this shit for a long time, you know, with the mountain bike stream training stuff. So it, it's, it is, man. It, 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 when I started doing it in 2005, no one was doing it. Like, that's why this guy came across me, because as soon as you started looking for anything to do with mountain bike strength training, it was pretty much me. And so, it's really cool to see, like, it's it's grown. Like, there's other people doing it. There's other people, like, specializing in mountain bike strength training and doing these things. And they, you know, talk about kettlebell swings for, you know, body position and manualing and... You know, it, it's gotten to the point where a lot of people talk about shit and they don't even know where it came from. And it's like, it came from me. Like, I was the first person to do it. I was the first person to talk about it. I was the first person to really kind of popularize some of these things. And so, but now everybody just takes it for granted that you do, you know, swings and goblet squats and get-ups for mountain bikers. Well, why? Well, it's like, well, fucking Bike James fucking told us to way back in the day. That's why, motherfucker. <laughs> and we all got better. So we just keep doing it. And so that's how it goes. Um, but yeah, the, the yeah, it was it was fun, man. It was a good time. The workshop was interesting. I still got to go through the videos and and uh, check out some of the, the drills we did. It was... Did you video it or did yeah. he... Uh, yeah. I didn't know if you videoed it or he offered like video to go along with the seminar. No, or... no, no, no. It was really informal. I think what it basically was is he was in town training uh, John Dobson because he does some strength and conditioning work specifically with him. And so he was in town and he was like, all right, well, I'll just, you know, put on this bodyweight workshop and if anybody wants to come. And. I don't know if he expected somebody to drive almost eight hours, like, you know, seven hours from Grand Junction, Colorado to come. But I was like, fuck it, man. It's a hundred bucks. I need to get out of town for some reason. It's a little warmer down there. So not was much. It, was it, yeah, I don't think not it was. Not much, dude. The weather, there's weather is pretty much like ours, I It's think. very similar. It's just, it's like half a tick warmer. Yeah. You know, not a full tick, just half a tick. So it's not enough to really motivate me to, you know... Go yeah, down there the during the winter. No, it's not gonna be my winter home. <laughs> but anyways, so um, so yeah, no, it was uh, the the his his philosophy. I really like his philosophy as far as um, like it's it's low intensity, uh, high volume, high quality work, and so you know it's not about lifting a lot of weight. Or, you know, doing the hardest thing that you can. It's about doing something that you can do, doing it really well with a lot of great intention, and then doing a lot of it. I mean, really, it's like training jiu-jitsu. I mean, it's like fucking repping your arm bars. Mm -hmm. that, that's exactly what it is. So, he just, he carries that philosophy to his training. So, that's why he likes the steel mace. Because the steel mace, really, it's not something you can use as a traditional strength tool for the most part as far as, like, really challenging yourself for five reps or less mm -hmm. like that's strength like yeah you can find some moves here and there trying to hold a mace in a really awkward position or whatever but for the most part it really lends itself to that high volume lower lower intensity, intensity <laughs> high quality work and that's what really ingrains that that movement quality and especially if you're doing anything that has a an endurance component because your movement efficiency is such a huge part of your endurance. The more efficient you are, the less energy you're going to burn. 
And how do you build efficiency? Well, you do a lot of what you're doing. When you do a lot of it, your body gets more efficient at doing it. So, and it's really tough to do a lot of stuff at high intensity. And so, again, like we, you know, it, it's it's easy to to pick on the CrossFit world, but that's where I feel like we're we're CrossFit where you run into bad CrossFit is where they're trying to do too much high intensity, high volume stuff. And, and they're not like, you know, and, and it's not necessarily cross. There's a lot of, um, it, it's easy to do that in any training system, really. Because it's, dude, I fucking do it myself. You do it to yourself. Like, we don't even have a goddamn training system. And it's like, man, should I lift a little bit more weight? Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, I should. You know, and uh, it's funny. Yesterday, yeah, I was working out. And last week, I told you I'd, I did a rep ladder with kettlebells. And I ended with the 24 kilo which was pretty fucking heavy because I hadn't done a lot of overhead pressing and I was like well I arrived at that number because I was doing three ladders and I can't start with a 12 because that's some pussy bullshit I gotta start with 16 so automatically I'm gonna end at the 24 and Tuesday man my shoulder was just not Not feeling great because we did some yeah the push-ups and we did some stuff and it was just it wasn't bad but it was just and so I was like, damn it, all right. Let's start with the 12. I'm going to do some 12, 16, and 20s. And when I was done, I was I told Kayla, I was like, I feel like I need to just text Rob ahead of time and let him know. Like, I know that was some pussy bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> My shoulder wasn't feeling up to it, but I know it was some pussy bullshit. I should have lifted the heavier weight. <laughs> so you, you got that meathead fucking, you know, in you. Dude, I don't know too many dudes that don't, really. And, uh... So you always got to balance that, but anyways, it was uh, it was fun. Some interesting moves, and we'll be doing some with the grumpy guy. I'm stoked to see some Saturday. Of it. I want to see what you got and, picked up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing, and he did he did you know like some flows and things like the yeah. I don't know. It was at the end. It was a workout. It was one of those things you go to, and. I don't know why. I just want to say, I just want to put it out there for anyone who does like these things. I don't have to get my ass kicked at every one of these fucking things that I go to to feel like I got my money's worth. I'm just saying. Like, I can go, learn some cool shit, go through a few little things, and but see, I think about myself. I think you are not the norm. I think the majority of paying customers... If they don't walk away fucking sweating or tired, right? They don't feel like they got their money's worth. I think. I don't that, know that, what it is. See, I don't know what the. I, I don't know. I think the. Okay, so if I really got to just go off on a fucking random tangent, here, <laughs> I think the RKC started the. Like I, I, I could be totally wrong, right? Because like, I came up with normal certifications, right? You had Ace, you know, NASM. Uh, all the personal all trainers. personal training certifications. Sure. I worked for the ISSA for a while, so there wasn't a a workout component. You know, I didn't have to pass some fucking like it was like a writer passage, yeah. right? Yeah, it was like I might have to show some form on some exercises, but it wasn't that. And I, I don't I, again. I could be completely wrong, I, and I, I'm sure RKC wasn't the first one to do it. But from my recollection, they were the first one that I knew about and really kind of popularized the idea of turning a certification into really what, for all intents and purposes, what I consider to be a high-end user course. You know what I mean? Like, to pass that snatch test, you had to be a high-end kettlebell user. Because it's a 10-minute snatch test, right? No, it, what, it was five. You had to do five 100 minutes, reps right. in five, five minutes. minutes. It That's was right. one rep every three seconds. Yeah. And, dude, you got to be pretty goddamn fit, fit on point, yeah. having spent a lot of... You got to be a pretty, a, a reasonably high-end user of the kettlebell to pass that test. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you can coach kettlebell training. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can program it. And so it started to really blur the lines a little bit between, okay, who can look real, who can do it at a really high level and who can actually coach it? And there was this assumption that like, well, if you can do it, 
you must be able to coach it and program it. I was like, man, that's a fucking false logic if I've ever heard it right there. And so, but it, I think it, like the RKC was so popular and I think it kind of, it changed the industry in some ways because that's the kind norm. Of standard or yeah, norm, in a lot of ways, man. You go to these things and you are going to be expected to work your fucking face off as part of the certification. And I don't necessarily agree with it. I think that there's a difference between like a high-end user and someone who can actually coach it and train it and do all these things. And so, you know, I'm just speaking as a fucking beat up, unmotivated 43 year old, almost 43 year old who I know can out coach and out program fucking 99% of the motherfuckers out there. Like, I don't care how many snatches you can do in five minutes. It does not mean that you're a better coach no. than I am. There's no correlation. No those correlation two. at all. None. Whatsoever. None. And so, but anyways, I just, I, it's funny, man. I just, I, like I said, kind of random tangent, but like, I, I, saw, I, I see that, like the RKC changed the whole kind of workshop and certification world into where like, you're absolutely right. The customer almost expects this rite of passage workout as part of what they're paying for. And I don't know that we're necessarily doing the training industry a service by well, yeah, Steve, it. Steve didn't really, I mean, he had us do some of the, when we went to the Ryan P. Isometric Seminar, he had us do some of them so we got, kind of understood and got the feel for it. But it wasn't, it definitely wasn't a brutal workout by the end. No. no. And that's he was, that wasn't his goal either. No, that was no. his whole point. Was point. like, you can't do that. It's not sustainable. Right. If you want to do jujitsu for a lifetime, you have to be nice to yourself. Yep. And uh, rite of passage workouts are not nice to yourself. And again, there's a time and a place for it, but it's like, it, like I said, I, just, I feel there's a confusion. It's like, yeah. okay, like, because I guess for me, just I've incurred fucking injuries i've got a torn meniscus i've popped both ac joints i've i've dislocated my elbow like i've got i've got legitimate injuries i can't straighten either one of my elbows so technically i wouldn't pass an rkc test because they would see me and they would if you don't know that no my elbow is locked out like that's it and you can check and see you know that's locked out it's it's it, it just doesn't fucking straighten out or bend anymore you'd fucking say, oh, you know, that was actually Pavel. I don't know if you know, but Pavel's elbow's fucked up. Like that, I always found that interesting. Like if you ever watch like his elbow, the, he can't straighten his elbow out all the way because he fucked his elbow up at some point. Um, I think, I don't know. I'm not going to conjecture what special forces, I'll say special forces. So everybody will be nice to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, like you wouldn't, You'd look at that and you'd be like, oh, you can't straighten your elbow out. You don't fucking pass the snatch test. And it's like, you know, no, man, my elbow is fucked up. And doing snatches on a fucked up elbow and a fucked up AC joint, like, guess what? That's not good. That's no. not good for my shoulder. So why am I going to beat the fuck out of my shoulder to pass some stupid rite of passage test? Like, anyways, you can tell, like, it's a, it, it, it annoys me, man. I just think there's not a, there's a lot of people who work out who haven't lived an exciting life and really injured themselves, and so it's like they can do shit like that. But it's like, dude, fucking ride a mountain bike really hard and smash yourself into the ground on a consistent basis for over a decade, and then tell me how easy it is to do some of these goddamn things. And now does that make me less of a coach, less of a person? Like, let's slap hands and wrestle, motherfucker, if we really want to, like see what's what you know so i don't know i just i find it all uh a lot of fucking posturing and you know oh, our our fucking workout's harder than your workout strength first workout is more legitimate than the rkc workout <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> ours is harder because we use two kettlebells and they only use one it's like fuck off man you can fucking go whip your dick out somewhere else and fucking compare <laughs> sizes like i don't give a fuck you know so anyways there you go random rant anyways that's a good rant i just i let it just keep going i liked it so but the seminar was good no the and seminar was good man. it turned into a little bit of a workout though a little bit of a workout but it wasn't like but you picked up it wasn't insane shit. yeah 
No, it was good. It was like, it, it was, uh, I picked up some good shit and, you know, like most things, like I, I wish there was more, you know, <clears throat> philosophy and systems, you know, it was like a, um, like I say with, with jujitsu, right? Like when I ask Pimenta a question, like really what I want to know is not what would you do in this situation, it's what do you see in this situation that I don't? Because once I see what you see, then the answer will become fucking self-evident. So I don't care what you would do. What do you see? And I, I, I like that's the end. Like that's the question I have for people with training too. Is like, all right, I don't care what you would do. What do you see? Like what? Why? Why are you doing this exercise? Like what's your thought process behind doing all this stuff? So it wasn't quite as much discussion of that as I would like because that's what I really like to geek out on. But uh, but yeah, some really cool exercises and flows and stuff and. It was some like leg weave drill to roll down the mat that uh, I'm going nice. to bust out on Saturday. It's going to blow people's minds. But a lot of the moves and stuff are very, you know, like jujitsu-esque. Like I felt I did a lot better than some of the other people there just because I was like, oh, yeah, I fucking move like this all the time on the mat. And, and also our mobility class, you know, doing like scorpions and some of the other moves that weren't you know, you may not necessarily see, uh, a lot of times. There wasn't anything that they threw at me that I was like, what the fuck is this? I've never seen this before. So, um, yeah, just reinforcing, like we've got some good shit that we're doing with the grumpy guy fit class. So it's good. People should come to it. Fucking take advantage of it. Free class every Free Saturday. Free class every Saturday. That's right. If you're in town, you can come take advantage of it. If you're at our gym, you can come take advantage of it. So, there you go. That's what we're all about. Getting people fit. Because we want better training partners. <laughs> it's a selfish... It is selfish. ...thing we're doing, but... I know. The benefit, yeah, because we're trying to make better, stronger people, which are in turn are better, stronger training partners. That's right. Better so training they're, partners. They're harder to deal with, so it makes your jiu-jitsu better. I was having a talk to Kelly. It's funny the other day, or today, I was like, telling her, like, you gotta stop fucking falling for that rolling back take, that like, I don't know how you describe it, dude, like, it, it was your, your signature fucking back take move that like, some, somehow, from like, court, from quarter mile? Yeah, 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 dude, it's so funny, dude, you saw me, who did I do it to? Because I was were, hitting it, you were like, look at you, or you something like you that. Had, I think you hit it on tofu. I think so, man. I think man. you hit it on tofu, yes, dude, I love that move, I was man. Cracking up. I love that move, but I know, I was, I've hit it on KLA enough times where I'm like, okay, you gotta, you gotta stop. stop. You gotta stop letting me hit this on you. Here's how you kill it. So make me work harder for it. But yeah, I know. I'm my own worst enemy. I can't. I'm like, all right, here's how you stop what I'm doing to you. Stop do letting me do it to you. <laughs> I've done this too many times. Too many times. It's no fun it's anymore. No fun. <laughs> no fun. Give me some resistance. Yes. Let me change my timing. Throw me so a new problem. <laughs> I need a new problem. <laughs> I think I hit it on her today. Did you? I think so. Can't remember. I, I think she's a little scared to do what she needs to do because that um God I forget his name. The guy that blew his knee out on me in uh, oh, Tell You Ride. Yeah. Because I stuffed the move and he didn't recognize it was stuffed, stuffed. And he tried to force it and he fucking popped his knee out. And it's like and, and I'll I'll repeat it to you again, baby. It the initial the initial stuffing of the move will not blow the knee out. It's the not recognizing that the move is stuffed and it's trying to force it. Trying to force it because your legs are at that sideways angle. Yes. And if you try to put heat on your own leg at that yes. sideways angle. You're already in a fucking go-go plot or yeah, a rubber guard or whatever. fucking your leg up. And the person's a fucking log. Like, they're not going to roll or you're move. You're not going to win that fight. You're not going to win that fight. They extend their feet yes. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. you get through on the roll, yep. you got an abort mission. Yep, exactly. Your leg, you're not in a uh, straight, you're not in a position of... Their back's no. flat. You don't you're have the fucking angle. You don't There's have the angle. Yeah, you don't have the strength advantage no. in that position. No, nothing. man. Nothing. So, anyways, yeah. So, please, stuff us when we're yeah. going If someone's knee it. gets fucked up, it's it's their own That's knee. their own fault. Yeah, you're not going to hurt anybody's knee by stuffing that move. It's them being a big stubborn dude. Bitch, yeah. Stubborn dude. Yeah, yeah, man. God, I can't remember his name. But uh, he's probably listening to this episode randomly for some reason, so... Sorry, Sorry, brother. I'm not talking shit about him. No, 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 man. No, dude. It was a good, good lesson. He's fucking back at it. I had to fucking stuff it because he killed me with it earlier. 
Yeah, he think he caught me in a goddamn calf slicer or something off uh, of that move. So he sets up the calf slicer. He's pulling out his tenth planet bullshit, dude. <laughs> I had to like, I had to like, no, put the brakes on, man. Speaking so, of tenth planet or Eddie Bravo, anyways, combat jujitsu, Gordon Ryan and uh, Rishio Verdum. Yes. When's that going down? Is there a date? Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. It's coming up. That's ex- that's exciting. Yeah, that's an interesting... It's an interesting match. i got to hand it to Gordon, man. Yeah, that's ballsy on his. That's, yeah, that's not I, a I mean, safe a, move. No, that is not a safe. That's fucking Fabricio Verdun. Yeah. Not only is his jiu-jitsu world-class, he's a fucking world-class MMA Former fighter. heavyweight UFC champion. Dude, like he's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. He has spent... He's been doing jiu-jitsu. He's been fighting MMA. He's, he's probably spent more time in the cage than Gordon Ryan's... Ever spent training striking MMA? You know what I mean? Yeah. Striking grappling, like that's a tall order. But yeah. Gordon Ryan's a fucking specimen, dude. dude. He's young. After what he did to Josh Barnett, yeah, he's he's young. He's hungry. He's jacked. Yeah, like he's a fucking monster, dude. dude like, there's, there are there are some motherfuckers. You can't are, you can't just look past them. You can't no. think Fabrizio's just gonna mop them. No, 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 no. no. And you know, it's just again, like I don't I don't believe in fate, right? But like, it's hard. Not looking back retrospectively and being like, it just seems like there were some people, like Michael Jordan's one of them, man. You know what I mean? Like, the dude's story, it's like, god damn. Like, he was born to conquer the world. Like, that was, and everyone that got in his way that you thought was going to be the one to stop him, nope, they just added to his fucking legacy. And... I don't know, dude. Like, I, I, I don't want to, like, say it, but I just, I, you start to wonder. It's like, God damn it, dude. Is Gordon Ryan one of these motherfuckers that, like, the fates have just kind of smiled on a little bit? Like, is Fabricio for Doom just another fucking step in that, like, I mean, so interesting I, story? I, I'm a little mixed. Like, the old school jiu-jitsu guy in me is rooting for Fabricio. Yeah. You know, he's just, he's been at it for so long. I'm a fan. I've I've watched probably every fight he's ever had. I've watched a ton of his jiu-jitsu matches. Like, huge, mad respect for the dude. One of the best jiu-jitsu in MMA, period. Hands down. I mean, he should be on, like, the jiu-jitsu MMA fucking Hall of Fame. But, I'm a Gordon Ryan fan. Yeah. Just because, like, I mean, he's young, he's brash, he's fucking good. He's good. He's good, dude. He's not just, I mean, he's physically gifted, yes, and he's strong, yes. He seems to be... But he is good, dude. He seems to be seeing that, that something la- different. That last... The last combat jiu-jitsu tournament, when I... You know, or not combat, but the quintet. Yeah. The last quintet that I watched all his matches in, really like, okay, it really made me like, oh, this motherfucker's not just physically gifted. Like, his jiu-jitsu is high level. Like, this motherfucker is good. He is no joke, dude. Dude, he may have, he may be Danielson and <laughs> yeah. Mr. Miyagi so part, behind the like, fucking. Part of me was rooting for him too, because I mean, really, he if he wins, that's the upset in this. Yeah, I'd say. I, oh yeah, no, no, there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, Fabricio should win this. Yeah, his experience striking in jiu-jitsu. But you know, Gordon Ryan's like that's ballsy on him to step up and take that. Fuck yeah, he's like fuck it. I mean, what's the worst that happens? He loses. Yeah, I mean, he loses a combat jiu-jitsu match. Who cares? Yeah. It's a it's a learning lesson for him. Well, yeah, I mean he's he's he has stated like his goal is MMA right. eventually. So this is just well, I mean that's what that's what the money's stepping at. stone for. I it. mean you hate, you hate to that's say where it. That's the money's at. Yeah. I mean, no matter how good somebody is at jiu-jitsu, like at the highest levels, they're still not making enough as pro athletes. Yeah. No. You know, that's why you see all the you know Gary Tonin's over in one FC. He's doing good. He's undefeated in MMA. Um, AJ Agazarm's switching over to. I mean, he's never going to abandon jiu-jitsu, but he's switching over to MMA. I'm not sure where his first fight's going to be. Yeah. But that's where the, I mean, that's where the money's at. Yeah. Because it puts more ass in the seats. It's a simple equation. Yeah. It's a bigger but fan base. Bigger fan base, Easier to get money, people, but... people like watching other people get punched in the face. Yeah. They don't like watching them roll around in their pajamas. I know. I get it. It, it does kind of suck a little bit, though, that we lose, like, our athletes. You know what I mean? Like, I like Gary Toten. Yeah. It's like, he's... Probably not gonna do like not maybe not never, but he'll probably be like, you know, after he's retired MMA kind of thing. Like, oh, I'll get back into doing some jujitsu matches or whatever. But it's like, dude, Gary Tonin at his prime is not gonna be focused on jujitsu. Nope. 
Like he's well, be, just like look at you know Rafael Lovato. Like he's yeah. hardcore in the MMA scene now. Yep. Fucking kicking ass. Title fight coming up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, he's got his eyes set on UFC like everybody sure. else, and it's just going to detract from... I mean, he's already kind of semi-retired anyways. I mean, fucking well-deserved. What yeah. fucking more can he yeah. win? I mean, he's accomplished so much in the yeah. jiu world. It's time for a new challenge for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, I mean, jiu-jitsu is a combat sport, and the, the ultimate test of a combat sport is fucking combat, not just jiu-jitsu, you know? It, it's a scrap. yeah. And so if you, you know, you go through the competitive ranks of jiu-jitsu and you're winning, you're winning, and you want to challenge yourself, like, I mean, what's next? It, yeah, it's oh, like, what's, what's next? next? Oh, we got to punch each other in the face now. Yep. <laughs> We've progressed to this. Let's throw with some slaps Slap. and then we'll progress to the yeah. punches. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I think it's good, man. I think it'll be a, an interesting match. And, yeah, I thought that was, a like you said, a ballsy move for Gordon. I mean, he's, he's a pretty... ballsy dude. He, he's, not a, he's not afraid of a challenge. No, man. Uh-uh. Yeah, I'll be interested. I mean, personally, I'm not a big fan of the shit talking. I think that it's a little... Uh... I mean, he doesn't say... I guess I'm not on social media, so I don't see too much of it. Yeah. The most I see of it, because I got a subscription to Flow Grappling, so I'll see some articles or some video clips on there. Yeah. And that's really all I catch of it, so I don't, I'm not inundated by it. Yeah, yeah. So just the little snippets I see, I get... Oh, he, Is it pretty bad? Is you he, know, he's, he has figured out that trolling uh, pays. Yeah. I, I mean, he... Gets attention. He does, man. He's a little bit... He trolls a little bit here and there. And it's, uh, you know, so he's a 20-something-year-old dude with time and a following. And so he can stir the pot pretty easily. With a simple tweet or Instagram post, so he does it. I, I, I I'll just say I have, I find the whole situation so curious that he, like the Donaher has not fucking like I don't get it. I don't get how Donaher and him are coexisting. Like, unless I have just a completely wrong fucking idea of... And even, like, Henzo. Uh, like, I don't... I don't get how someone hasn't, like, just fucking grabbed him by the ear and just said, Look, man. Like, this, you just need, this isn't fucking respectful. Like, you well, know what I mean? Like, he, he went so far, like, Lovato Jr. posted something kind of calling Gordon Ryan out. Because Gordon Ryan was saying, like, all the greats only fucking compete in skill sets that favor them. And Lovato Jr. felt compelled to be like, yo, young blood, I don't know if you know this, but, I, you know, I've competed in, I mean, do the fucking list of shit. Like, you compete in fucking stick fighting, call these stick fighting. Like, look. Tom Gordon Ryan's competing in fucking Collie stick fighting. Like, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, how, like... So, if you've... If you've rankled the jiu-jitsu world enough to where Rafael Lovato Jr. feels compelled to... Say something. Say something. To just be like, look, young blood. You're, this isn't right. I, I don't get how Henzo or Donaher or any of these people, if they fucking really stand for what they stand for, has not said something to him other than, I hate to say it, the fact that, like, like he, he's a little bit of a fucking gravy train. Like, yeah, so that's, I think there, there could be a number of things going on there. One, that's exactly what I was thinking first is, it's bringing attention to them in the school. Who would Donna her be without like a lot of that shit, right. man? So, the, you know, he's kind of their cash cow gravy sharing. Even though it's not a huge cash cow right now, but it still brings attention, brings eyeballs, which means more people when they go to that city want to train with them, yada yada. So that that could be going on. Or fuck, for all we know, they could be like, hey man, chill out, and he's just not listening. And they may end up telling him to kick rocks. Yeah, like, that's true. Like Marcelo did with Dylan Dennis. You know, Dylan Dennis was getting too out of control. Marcel was like, that's not going down to my academy. Yeah. And sent him packing. He's like, you're not banned for life, but until you can be a respectful martial artist, you're done training under my name. Yeah. And so maybe that is going on and we don't know. You maybe, know, man. I could be totally off. I just... I, I, that, that, that... 
I, 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 I agree. Scene, like shit. that scene really seems interesting. Well, to me. you know, it's the same thing. Like I bitched about there with like the Conor McGregor thing. You know, the best analogy I can come up with. I, I've tried to think of other ways to put it, but it, it's just like. It's just an old, it's an old fucking movie, man. It's just like the very first Fast and Furious came out. It was fun to watch. It's a bunch of hot ass chicks, fast cars, muscle up dudes fighting, like explosions, cars jumping. Fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Fast and Furious 2 came out. Kind of fun to watch. Fast and Furious 18. I would rather jerk the wheel on oncoming traffic. Yeah. I've seen it. We know what's happening. I've seen it. We know what's happening. Yeah. That's exactly what's going on with Conor McGregor. You know, that, in my in my opinion, right, right, yeah, I agree. It is, I mean, when he first came out, it was funny, it was entertaining, he's talking shit, kicking ass, but it's the same thing every fucking time with this guy, and so now these other guys are doing the same thing, and it's like, come on, man, like, it's, yeah. you're not doing anything new here, like, yeah, just show up and compete and let your actions, you know, lead the way, yeah, and so, yeah, it's, I get, I do, I get a little irritated, with it. a little bit of shit talking, I don't mind, just because yeah. it, it's a, it's a con, it's a contest. And it's an answer. But just, like... But a little bit... talking for fun. Yeah. Not like... I, I don't know. I forget, like, he posted that he had entered Nogi Worlds and, and, and he, you know, posted a picture and his post was like, you know, everybody better just stay the fuck home. It's like... Okay. You know what I mean? It's like... I, I don't know. It's just... I don't know. I just... I find that kind of shit just disrespectful in general because you're, you know, like, Roberto uh, Braves and that... Class, like you know, okay, I know you beat him already, but like that dude's no fucking chump, you know. And like, there's some fucking good guys, and it just be like everybody should just stay the fuck home. And I don't know, I, I just, I'm just it gets old. old fashioned. It, it, it gets old. No, that's just it's just an old song and dance. We've yeah. seen it. It's worked really it's well for a few guys. Deal. It is the Conor McGregor. That's the deal. At this point, it just seems like a parody. Like you guys are it trying is. to act like Conor McGregor because he was successful. Because he made with so it. much fucking money with it. But like, it's not you. No, like that's it's the forced. Deal. Yeah, God, that was the deal. I was watching. I know you're gonna laugh. Like America's Got Talent. Cause my family was into it. I want to admit that it was kind of interesting for me. <laughs> but there was like a couple of the kids that were singing, and it was it was funny. Like one of the girls in particular was, she was just basically imitating like Mick Jagger. You know, and it was like, the first time you saw it, it was like, wow, this is kind of cool. But then you're like, then you're like, wait a minute, there's no like substance here. Like, this isn't her. You can tell. You can tell. Like, yeah. she's imitating someone. And that, I, you know, it's really hard, man. I, I, we were talking in general, like, I mean, I, I would say that, that like movies and music and a lot of stuff today fuck man it is not as good and it borrows a lot from like like when we were younger and i was thinking like man there was a generation before rock and roll like the first people like Jimi hendrix and like you know led zeppelin like those motherfuckers they were literally creating a genre like it didn't exist you couldn't create sounds and music like they were doing and they created it. And so, and then like, and, but now everyone's heard it. And, and the artist can't help but in some way be influenced by having heard it. But like, these guys created something without having heard it before. Like, they created it from basically the fucking ether, you know? And acid. In acid, but that's the same thing. You know what I mean? It's, it's the goddamn same thing. It's the ether, man. The universe was whispering to them, "Yo, buddy, do this." And so, yeah, man. It just and you, but you can tell. Like, I guess my point is just overall. It's like, I mean, you you can tell when people are trying to imitate something that they've seen rather than being authentic themselves. And I think that's what, you know, it, you kind of sense with a lot of this shit talking shit going on in the jujitsu world and, you know, MMA in general. It's, a, it's a just, it's just forced. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what it is. It's not natural it's for not, a lot of these and guys. And you can tell. Yeah. And when you can see that it's, it's a show you're trying to put on and a persona you're trying to live yeah. up to. It's just like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. It's, it's a real turn off. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. I think that's what it is. So. Anyways, but I'm excited to see the fucking dude wrestle. Yeah, so. I am excited. I am excited for that. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. All right, man. 
So, I mean, I'm going to say we wrap this episode up, but being that it is a Thanksgiving episode, yes. I think we should both say what we're thankful for about with jiu-jitsu. Yeah, you know, man. school or jiu-jitsu in general or... Dude, yeah, man. What, what, what are we thankful for in the jiu-jitsu world? World. So... You want to go first? You want me to go first? You can go first, man. All right, man. I would have to say, I was thinking about this. I'll narrow it down to like two things. Oh, <laughs> Because there, this, there, we could go on for another hour about That's being, true. being thankful. So I had to like be concise so we don't give everybody else a fucking ear beaten. They've already been listening to us for a fucking an hour and a half. <laughs> I think, man, probably the two things I'm most thankful for is the struggle, the, the suffering, like we've talked about. Like, dude, that shit keeps me sane. The ass whoopings. Keeping my ego in check in the struggle. And then the other part I'm really thankful for is, and this may be, seem weird coming from me, but the social aspect of it. Yeah. The tribe. The tribe. It's fucking huge, man. It's it's so important. Like, I know I'm kind of a dick. I get that. And it takes me a while to warm up to people and new people, but yeah, like the tribe we have in our gym, like that's so fucking important, man. Yeah. They're important for my well being. So. Yeah. No, man, I would second that one. I mean, that's probably the number one thing I'm yeah. thankful for from Jiu Jitsu that Jiu Jitsu's given me. I mean, it's just, I've, uh, God, man, I've been involved in, in other things and um, other sports and, and stuff, and I've just, you just can't beat the camaraderie and the brother and sisterhood you develop with people that you're trying to fucking you know, simulated murder every day and they're trying to murder you and you guys just going hard and yeah, man, it's, just, it's something really special. It's really hard to describe to people that it's, you know, to like, besides the physical benefit that they get, it's like, you don't realize you're missing this kind of, you know, tribe in your life. Like you need these people in your life because these are the best kind of people that you can have in your life. So you go back to the monkeys throwing rocks, right? It's like, dude, I have to trust you implicitly. Like, you're not going to break ranks on these fucking rules. Like, we can rule hard and we're going to respect each other. So, I know if there was a lion out there on the savannah, dude, we're going to throw rocks at that we're motherfucker. You're not going to run and I'm not going to run and we're going to fucking throw rocks until that fucking lion runs off or we both get eaten, man. <laughs> but we're in this together. Like, that's how fucking... That's how we are, so... Yeah, man. I think that's the the number one thing. I think for me, the uh, um, man, really the ability to have something that I feel like I can continue to uh, enjoy. And I mean, I know the time's going to come when I'm not going to continue to improve, but I feel like I'm going to be able to improve longer and later in life with jujitsu than I would with any other sport I mean I know like strength training I'm not gonna like dude you beat the fuck out of yourself mountain biking all those things and like man jiu jitsu it just it, it it I don't know it sounds corny but it's like it gives me so much hope for my old age like I, I don't I don't despair I don't look at being 60 and wonder like what the fuck am I gonna do with myself like just play golf it's like no man I'm gonna take care of myself it gives me a reason to take care of myself. It gives me a reason to continue to, to train and, and do mobility and do all this stuff because it's like, dude, I'm going to be 60, 70, 80 years old doing jujitsu and God damn it, like I fucking hope I'm still able to do it at a reasonably decent level. For for that age. For that yeah. age, yeah. exactly. And, and yeah, you may not be able to roll like you can now, but you'll just become a better coach. Yeah. Because you won't have the physical capabilities anymore Yeah, to deal with a fucking 20-year-old monster. But yeah. damn, dude, you know, you'll have some goddamn tricks or whatever. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, hopefully at 80 we'll have our robotic legs and arms so I'll be able to deal with them better. But we'll, but we'll, we'll, I know what you mean. we'll both be 80 just beating the shit right, out of each other. Right, that's what I mean, though, is like, like physically, but that's the thing, though, is like, like, like mentally, like I don't ever see jujitsu getting boring. Like, it'll always present mental problems. Like, even though I know my body may not necessarily be able to, to fucking keep up with my mind, like, my mind will, will be engaged in a way 
that like again I'm not trying to detract from the sports but it's like dude, how fucking mentally engaged can you be if you played football uh, when you're 60 years old you know what I mean like I, I don't know maybe you're coaching or whatever but it's just it's not the same damn thing man it's not the same thing not the same thing so that those are two the two biggest things I'm most thankful for man that family and just kind of that like cause I found Jiu Jitsu in an interesting time for me it was like I, I was peaking with mountain biking and I think in the back of my mind I realized like this isn't sustainable dude like you can't keep putting yourself in these situations and riding at this level and there's gonna be dire there's gonna be fucking dire consequences eventually and and I also knew just physically too like the the the, the ability to physically do what I needed to do was going to come much quicker with mountain biking than it was going to be with, with jujitsu. You know, I didn't know that at the time, but I just, in the back of my mind, I knew like, man, I'm like, dude, mountain biking is going to change roles for me in my life. I don't, I, I need something new. And so it's really kind of interesting, man, just going back to it, how like, you know, the, the universe puts things in your path because it just so happened at that point you know, like every dude, man, I'd thought like since seeing Hoist Gracie in 1994 choke a bunch of motherfuckers out in UFC 1 and 2, like, oh, I want to do jiu-jitsu. I never got the opportunity and just to have these weird things line up to give me that opportunity to start jiu-jitsu at just that time when like I was needing something to take over mountain biking but not quite knowing that I needed it and, and you know, uh, realizing like, man, I found something that I can keep doing and not have to fucking yeah do it at a high level and have fun with and so yeah i love it man it's fucking it's the best i love, just love jujitsu i'm thankful for jujitsu thank you for jujitsu as a whole as a whole man yeah. so yeah it's been great man the people i've met through have been awesome and the, like i said the tribe we've got has been great and there's just so much that it's growing too man there we have i mean we got an awesome thing at our school and, but, you know, there's, we got a lot of young guys in there training, you know, some young white belts and blue belts coming up and you see them growing and learning. It's, it's, it's yeah, fun. Yeah, it is, you know, man. You see them fucking getting better. And getting and better. You know, like Trey and Austin. I was watching Austin roll a lot yesterday. I was, you know, I was impressed, man. I was watching him. I was like, this motherfucker, like. Dude, he's getting. I mean, he's an athletic dude, but he, he, gets, he doesn't use his athleticism all the time. He, no. Because he knows he's athletic, you know, yeah. and he knows he can get away with some shit. But you see him meter that and yeah. trying to use technique, and I see I see that in him. I'm like, all right, man. Yeah. This motherfucker's cool. Like, I, I, he's he gets it. He sees it. Yeah. He, he knows he could just like blast his way out of this. Some, but he, he doesn't try. Like, or blast his way into this. Like, he's a, he he tries to figure out the he's correct way to do it. Man. He's learning jujitsu, man. Yeah. Dude, when I see that, I just like. Well, for, see, it sounds kind of cheesy, but like it just like fucking warms my heart. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yes. Well, see, I, again, I, I, with him especially, because like, dude, he's an MMA guy. Yeah. And he's he's good. Yeah. So for him to put on a gi and come Be out over of his comfort zone and take ass whoopings and yep. and like you said, like meter that athleticism because he wants to learn the technique. Dude, yeah, like I'm, I'm super impressed with that dude. Fuck yeah, yeah, and it is. It's like you know, seeing dudes like that. It's like that's what fucking inspires you. It's like this is, this is awesome. Like what other, yeah, it's just it's great seeing people push themselves because most people don't, man. Like I said at the beginning, we all fucking have that in us, but most people just won't fucking access it and put them, let themselves do it. Speaking of that, I found a little hack I want to share with you. Okay, and I can share this with everybody. Yes. So we have our gorilla. Grandy that we train with. Yes. We, we've talked about him many a times. Dude's a fucking animal. He's strong as fuck. His jiu-jitsu's good. So it's not just because he's strong. Yeah. But I mean, he, he's a physical specimen. His jiu-jitsu's good. He beats the fuck out of me. But I found, instead of doing like, because there's a lot of times like you'll do your first round of the day with, you know, maybe one of the one of the girls or, or like a white belt or something so you kind of get warmed up. Then you kind of move into your more difficult training partners. No, man. I like jumping right in with Randy because he's such a fucking gorilla. <laughs> and that because you jump in and you fucking go hard with him the very first round, like all your other rounds that day. Right. Man, everybody else feels like fucking pussies. I know, dude. Like they're straight. Like I just dealt with this chimpanzee that's pissed off and he's squeezing the life out of me. And that way when I go with the next person, dude. I go with the next person that's squeezing me. It's like, is that all you got? This fucker was just crushing my internal organs. You... 
That is so funny you say that, because I rolled with you after rolling with him, uh-huh. and there was a moment where you tried to rear naked choke me, and I was like, mother- is that all you got, motherfucker? <laughs> like, I just went with this chimpanzee over there, he just ripped my face off twice. Like, that's all you got? No, you ain't getting I that. So that's why I let go, I let yeah. go with him very, and I'll, totally, man. there's a couple, there's a lot of times I'll do like, I'll go very first round with him, and you know, he'll fucking just demolish me, I'm like, alright, we're going again, I'll go like two or three rounds with him, like right in a row. And then all my other rounds that day are like, you motherfuckers have not been lifting no, enough weights. You are not as strong as dude, this guy. Dude, I, I told you, man. Uh, um, it's oh, funny. Oh, fuck, dude. Who's That's our, my little hack for the week. Who's our boy from uh, from Montrose? Chris? Um, Chris, hey, Chris. Yeah. Dude, rolling with Same Chris thing. feels... Well, rolling with Chris feels different since Randy joined the gym. Yeah. It, it totally... It's like, dude, after rolling with Randy and I get like... We start rolling with Chris and it's just like, oh, Okay. Like, yeah, he's, you know what I mean, he's big and strong, but it's like, like, to have someone that, you know, because him and Randy are like, different body types, but they're both like, they move, yeah. and they're fucking strong, and so it's like, it's hard to find training partners like that, and so to have a training partner like that, like that, you know, that's what you're, basically what you're saying is like, dude, once you train with that motherfucker... Everyone else is like, come on, like, you know, are you too slow or you're too weak? You know what I mean? Like you're missing something cause you ain't got it all. So yeah. yeah so, so that's my little hack for the week. I hear you, dude. I hear you. I got to I'll keep that one in mind. It is. So I know. So instead of going with an easy round first to warm up, jump right into the fire. Fuck dude. That funny. hurts. Find yourself metering. It know. fucking hurts dude. Yeah. It ain't pleasant on the body or on the spirit or the ego. Dude, the first round is hard, man. First round's brutal. Because, yeah, your cardio takes that first initial yeah. hit. Like, yeah. you haven't haven't gone anaerobic yet, so you haven't had that chance to kind oh, of yeah. deal with it. And, yeah. It's not a pleasant experience. It's not a pleasant experience. So, all right. Challenge accepted. All right. So. But anyways. All right, man. So, we're training tomorrow. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. You got to earn that turkey dinner, bitches. That's right. I know. I got a good and awkward family. Thanksgiving over at my mom's. Sweet. So, Those are the best kind. I know. Make sure you bring up some co- uncomfortable topics at the table. I'm sure they will be brought <laughs> up and I would just sit there drinking my beer. <laughs> Shaking your head. Shaking my head. I will be talking about it next week on the podcast. That's awesome. None of my family listens to it. So I can talk shit. I can talk all sorts of shit. So <laughs> Exactly. Except about my wife. She's awesome. Of course. So. There's no shit to talk about her. No, man. Except for you told us the other day that she has jiu-jitsu mastered. No, 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 she's no, only, no, no, She's no. only going to come in and train in open mats. I didn't see, <laughs> see, you're putting words in my mouth. I said that she's she's doesn't feel like she needs to train anymore because she's happy with her purple belt because it, that's her favorite color. Oh. So and she, brown's kind of an ugly color. She doesn't want to advance anymore. So she basically advanced faster than anyone else in the gym, the purple belt. I think if you looked it up, you'd probably find she's in the history of the gym. Probably the shortest time from white to purple. And now she's done. Well, maybe she can talk to Coach Kevin and tell tell him that she is not interested in a brown belt. But so she will just be purple until she's black. Just skip the whole black brown (laughs) belt. (laughs) There you go. She's just got to be purple belt for a really long time. Okay, yeah. Angela would like to talk to him about that too. She'd probably like to talk to him about getting her blue belt back if she could. <laughs> Which she doesn't deserve. Because Angela's gotten really fucking good. Despite I don't let her get his fucking cro- uh, side control no, cross-facing. No, 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 no. Her like, cross-face is mean as shit, yeah, dude. Yeah, I know. She, she likes to talk shit about herself and pretend. But dude, she, she almost fucking choked me good. yesterday. Did she? We, when we were starting on each other's back. She got this fucking gi grip, like, oh, like yeah. a bow and arrow grip. Oh, yeah. And she had like a death grip on that thing. Well, dude, those yeah. girls go hard on each other. Dude, I almost literally, I, I legitimately, I almost tapped. And then I was like, wait a second. <laughs> no offense, Angela. But I was like, this bitch ain't tapping me out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, am, I was like, I, I had to do like a little check. Like, am I about to go unconscious? Nope. I'm just very uncomfortable. I am not fucking tapping. Like, I had, <laughs> I had to go through that process. I was like, God damn it. Oh, man. Well, she'll be happy to know. She got you at least that close. I, know, I didn't want to tell her. No. Well, Hopefully she won't listen to this episode. Right. Her bestie will tell her. <laughs> Hit the fucking grumpy guy class while they're giggling in the corner. Making fun of me. Exactly. So. All right, Anyways, man. All right. Well, cool. Well. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, everybody. you too, man. Yeah, I don't have Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And fucking. We'll see you motherfuckers next week. Yeah, man. Be well.
Ditto. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Grumpy Guy BJJ podcast. Thank you all for listening. You can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Please make sure to subscribe and leave us a review. It really does help and will allow us to keep putting out episodes. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, hit us up at grumpyguybjj at gmail.com. Also, go to our website, grumpyguybjj.com, and get signed up for podcast updates and get our free BJJ Improvement Starter Kit. That's it for now. So get on the mat, train hard, and talk to you all next week. Die. Who? Me, myself, he died.